Boom, we're good. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, episode two of The Shape Up. Um, here this evening, uh, I'll be hosting W. Demont. Try. Five. Yeah, man. Doctor. Pleasure, Pete. <laughs> Pleasure, Pete. <laughs> Doc. Okay. We get, we've, got, we've got a topic here. We've got a topic that um, we've been wanting to talk about for, for some time now. A minute. Uh, and that is the simp. What is a simp? Who are simps? Yep. What is the impact of, of simp culture uh, on modern day culture, modern day dating? Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, intersex kind of dynamics. So just before we kick off, I thought what I'll quickly do is, of course, go to um, the Bueller Lendl, Google, uh, and just <laughs> Google the, the definition, mecca. just definition of sim. See, number one, if it's so, just so we've got common ground in terms of yeah. what we mean by simp because it really depends on who you ask uh, yeah and some people will like to manipulate the definition of being a simp because they benefit from simp culture right so yeah what is a simp a simp is internet slang apparently describing someone who shows excessive sympathy and attention toward another person typically Someone who does not reciprocate the same feelings in pursuit of affection or a sexual relationship. Okay, so that mm -hmm. that is our starting point. That is uh, uh, what a simp is. So, just to kick off, what what's our kind of thoughts of simp and simp modern simp culture? I'm going to kick off with uh, Trife. Do you know what? Um, I was speaking with Millionaire Mike the other day about simping and we've kind of defined simping. So we think everyone has simped in their life at least once or twice, maybe when they were younger. Like I could, I put my hand up here. I simped hard when I was younger and looking back on it now, um, I had a situation where I liked this girl. Uh, I, was, I was young. I was like before I was 20. So let's 16 to 16 to about 18 and she had a boyfriend but she was always going on that she was going to leave her boyfriend and so i would take her out listen to her like i was proper on it man but she always gave me that little bit of that little bit of hope that little bit of rope just like yeah okay yeah so i think next next time i'm gonna um i'm gonna break up with him and it just went on and on i ended up dropping her to, her, to his house bear times and stuff like that and i always had that little hope so for me that's kind of simping and then obviously i had like all the brothers and stuff like that and they were just like terry man um, what are you doing try what are you doing because this girl don't like you kind of thing and so it had that kind of realization that it kind of it wasn't going nowhere basically and i think for me that's kind of the kind of beginning of simping and certain people learn from that which i did obviously i kind of realized when a girl was had feelings for me and when a girl didn't after that certain people don't learn and they just kind of always go into situations where they're just um giving her more than you're getting back if that makes sense nothing's reciprocated basically yeah so no, no that's good that's a, you know i think that's a that's a number one a good a good definition and you you can have You've got personal experience in it, right? Um, <laughs> she is in it now. You've, got, you've got skin. You've got skin in the game. But you know, you, you said you said a really good point, which is one I completely agree with. Which is, we no one here can judge, right? Yeah. No one here can judge when it comes to simping. Simping is like sin. No one can judge because everyone's everyone's <laughs> done it, right? Everyone's done it. Sometimes yeah. everyone's done it. Yeah, and it's. It's actually, I, I look at it as something we're born into. Yeah. 
it, yeah. it, the culture is so strong it's really it, the matrix is a great analogy because you are born into it not even knowing it right yeah we're conditioned to view the world in a particular way view women in a, in a particular way to act in a particular way um, mm -hmm. and then the reality of that is just completely opposite when i was um when i was yeah uh, a teenager there was uh there was a barbershop just around the corner uh, i won't mention any names but um <laughs> anyone that knows the area knows knows the barbershop and the, the owner of it is funny at the time he he basically was red pill before red pill right <laughs> He was he 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 was spitting red pill facts in a way I'd never really heard this. Okay, so when he was when he was there, it would be it would be like near the end of the day, you come in, you sit down with a few of us that were in there, and then he'd be talking about women and the way he's talking. I remember at the time thinking, this, this guy's terrible. These sort of things he's saying about women, <laughs> but actually. <laughs> <laughs> as i've gotten older i can see and understand what he was saying right yeah. but my idealism as a teenager as a, as a young man the things that i was told to do are so mm. out of step with the with the the, the, the modern world that ultimately yeah. you just get used right that's really what yeah the, the core of being being a simp is in my opinion you just you just used like a utility like raw material um you know the, the example you used i've got examples like that as well you know one of the key things is the friend zone so yeah. you <laughs> think you're getting out of it. <laughs> that yeah. vast yeah, oasis. Getting out of that. <laughs> exactly that's the phantom zone there's no getting out of that and you're in it you're, in it. you're never getting out um but that's why women love to keep guys there Mm -hmm. because they can totally. get the benefit right the benefit from men without having to 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 invest or give or do anything other than just simply um the promise the wish um that one the hope, hope. that really <laughs> lies <laughs> at the heart of the simp the hope right <laughs> and the, and the thing is they know it's there it's kind of like you know there's a little flame that's just about to go out right and you just go yeah. lower it a little bit, just to, not enough for it to get going, right? But just enough to, to just enough to to keep you there, just enough that maybe one day she'll see and she'll understand, and then we'll be together. And then this fantasy that's in your head, you know, yeah. Um, and I think that plays a played a massive part in in what we see in terms of simping. Um, Do you know why as well, I think, no. from our generations? Because we kind of grew up in the um, R&B generation where, you know, people going outside a girl's house, Great singing, point. like, Joe Great the C, like, love love songs yeah. and stuff like that. So I was kind of brought up on that. I was like, yeah, man, I want to want to sing to my girl in the rain and stuff like that. And you, then, boy, it just never happened. You man. know what? <laughs> You know, you you one hundred. That's a, that's a great point. You one hundred percent correct. Because if I, if you stop and you listen today, right? Yeah. Listen to those tunes, right? If you were just to take the music out, just listen or or just read the lyrics, the conditioning that's go that the program that goes into <laughs> those songs. I'm, I listen to these things now, thinking that's. <laughs> Why would you do you know what I mean? You're my you're my moon, you're my star, I live for you. I live for you. All of these it's crazy. Things, it's it's the, crazy. All of these things that we're just keep conditioned to okay, that's what love is. <laughs> I will find this special and you know, if you look at the videos, there's always this, you know, pretty girl and he's serenading her and eventually he gets her. And you know, ultimately we all consume that lie. And went out into the world with it. Do you know what I mean? Um, and some of us, as a certain person has joined a call, even encouraged others like myself in the in the path of symptom. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll let I'll let um, Mike elaborate on that when he when he's properly online. Mike, you're you're there, but we can't see you in terms of your picture, bro. May not see me. No, nah, bro, no, he's black. No. I thought you were trying to get yourself no, sorted in that. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> okay, put the camera around, bro. Yeah, get camera to face you, bro. <laughs> I'm just in the bag. Wow, um, Mikey, nice with technology. He's um, got, yeah, he's got the stand, though. Man's, he's got, he's got the ring light in that. He's, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to flip it around, bro? <laughs> Make sure you were so dressed. Doctor, but, Doctor, have you had any experiences your... with, like, um, with simping? Me? When you were younger? Like, you think, yeah. Oh, mate, 100, bro. 100. Like, the younger me, is exactly what you mum was saying, the younger me just didn't know. <laughs> like, and I, it's only when you get older and you hit some years, you realise the programming in the system was yeah. mad. It was like, mad. all the songs that got played, all the chart toppers, like Boys to Men, them man were bawling their eyes out for the women. <laughs> like, you know, you can walk all over me and I'll still be there for you kind of lyrics. <laughs> so it was written for man. It had to be that way. And it's only like after some time you get the opportunity to really like you grow and you like you do a couple of things and you get a kind of a feedback and you're like, yo, that, that's not too too yeah. right, you know. I might have to just kind of check myself <laughs> and reevaluate a couple of things. And then when you do, you realize like, rah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Big... So yeah, hundred percent. When I look back at my my young, especially my like my first kind of relationships, yo, I was way in, too much in, and they were like pinky toes in, and I was all in. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in that position, you just think that's what that's how it goes. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One thing that um, so in preparation for this, because I was thinking, like. I think we can kind of be forgiven, like, not giving us an excuse, but we can kind of be forgiven because of the programming that was there when we were youths. Yeah, I think there's been a bit of a culture change. And I was thinking, so why in this day and age is simping still such a like a, a big thing? And uh, yeah, I was doing some research and I came across this term. I don't know if you man's heard of this term, hoflation and broflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for, for the people that don't know, it's an interesting term. So getting going to the godfather of knowledge, Google, Google tells us that hoflation is the dramatic increase in the cost for men today to maintain a relationship with a woman while the quality of that woman continues to go down. Um, so some of the expectations. Have you man heard of the uh, the triple six rule? Yeah, yeah. The, what, I've heard yeah. it, but I don't. Right. Could you? So, yeah. six, so I elaborate. So I first landed on the triple six, and when I when I went into the deep dark web, I found out that there's actually the six six rule. Yeah. So the usual triple six rule is they want a guy to be to make six figures. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, my my numbers <laughs> show that four in every hundred people, so that's men and women, fall into that category. They want their man to have a six pack, which is less than one in ten. Yeah, and then they want their man to be six foot plus, which is three ten, three and ten. And then the dark web showed me that there's another three. There's the, uh, the know, can, yeah, hold, like... can hold a six minute conversation, owns a six hundred horsepower whip, and has six inches of wood plus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is you know, it, you can't. You can't skip past the fact that it's six 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 either. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a deep twisted thing that is in the minds of of of, of this generation. And you know, so your point about you know you could sort of let our generation off the hook a bit because we didn't have social media, we didn't have an antidote. Exactly. Right. We, we there was there was no neo. There was, yeah. no there was no Neo. There was no Neo. There was no Neo at the time to, to get us out. We were just in, right? In. in. There were no tracks that were doing the opposite. It was just all, everybody was no. like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> or, or you might be lucky enough to come across an older that would try, that would school you. Yeah. Yeah. Which um, I did. But well, well, there you go. And But I came across that, but I rejected it. Yeah. Uh, you know, do, do you remember? I just just couldn't. I rejected that it. I was, thought like that's cold. That's that's yeah, not how it goes. That's not right. It, it don't work. That's not how. It, yeah. 
That's not how it is. No, do you remember, again, back to the Matrix when Neo just couldn't take that reality, right? He just, it's too much. He's like, rejected it. dizzy and vomiting, room, you know? And vomiting and exactly, that. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I, there's, they call that blue pill rage, which is where oh, if is. you're yeah. kind of, you know, red pilled up and, and you have a so particular view of the, the world system. and then you try to guide someone else to say, look, why don't you kind of look at things or look look at relationships like this? Yeah. There's a guy that I know, we had a conversation. He he fully just completely rejected just the core basic concepts. And I see it. So it's not for everyone. Some people yeah. don't want to let go of the dream. It's a, it's a yeah. beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, right? Mm. We all want to believe that you know, a relationship can be a particular way that you just meet someone, she likes you, you like her, you fall in love, you, you get married to have kids, and that's it. Mm. It's not reality. <laughs> it's not that it's not that simple. It's not that simple. I think, you know, another interesting thing that I, I found and I think is probably a, a a big issue. So as you alluded to, back in our day we didn't really have um social media acting as like trend for this whole situation um and i think women again i can feel that i might get shot for this comment but women naturally in their genetic makeup are hypergamous so they want to naturally find a man who has a higher social status and who earns more you know than them so if you live in a gated community so to speak back in the day you only knew the guy in your area that you bumped into. And therefore, you could pick in your area and say, so this is the best man here. And you would say, yeah, I'm happy. But that knowledge now, because the internet opens all those doors, social media opens all those doors, women are just looking always like, well, I've got these guys in like the, the friend zone here, but man, I can hit that one and that one and that one. And then it's like that constant state of, now I can do better. Now I can do better. And I think society and culture feeds into the rhetoric for women to have like all of this positivity, body positivity. Like women can be excessively overweight where they're medically, medics are telling you, yo, your life is at risk. But another woman will say to them, you go girl looking good like that. You know, it's like, <laughs> do you get what I mean? Uh, and I think yeah. I was gonna, gonna propose to you guys. What do you think? Do you think that this is a this is an issue? Yeah, I I think it's um, I think it kind of just like makes the situation worse because you've got a situation where ordinarily the ordinary guy probably wouldn't look at certain individuals as shallow as that sounds, but that's true. And actually, it becomes like a goal like I, i've seen oh, this is a bit deep i've seen girls that kind of like you're on a night out and there's there's no way there's no way anyone's looking that way even if it's like six drinks deep but you got their mates like literally going up to guys being like why aren't you chatting to my friend why aren't you like this and this like you know how we talked about wingman it's almost like the reverse of that like they're expecting yeah. someone to take the hit yeah and it's like no and then if you say no or you say like no nah, that's not my vibe suddenly it's like what because she's big yeah yeah what? because like yeah. this and this i have a preference bro yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, you know you, you, you made a really you know you made a great point there you, but you, you said something like it, yeah it sounds a bit shallow but i, I don't know I, I i'm at a point where i challenge that right mm. which is we're geared towards you, you know, you will scan for genetic health, right? You just will, as 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 men. That's just the style. And women do it too. Women. This do is it too, the yeah. this is yeah, the thing. Sure. Women will do it too. They they look, um, they look at height, they look at symmetry, width of shoulders, um, all these sorts of things that they they may not know they're doing it. Yeah. But they do it right. There's been studies that have shown this. That's just how we're wired. So trying to force you know attraction is 
is is the same way these women look at guys in the friend zone. That's how I look at it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when you're in there, you're never getting out. That's it. You're never tainted. Out, you're tainted. You get the smell <laughs> of <friend. laughs> the, the other thing with that is as well, though, is like, it's 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 a lie as well, isn't it? To like the actual the other chick too, like the big chick, it's a lie, like yeah. false self esteem, and then it's the guy's fault for destroying that self esteem as well, even though they've not even partake, looked, or tried to get involved with it. But it, it, I'm it's, gonna keep it a hundred, uh, Pascal. There's some man's I know, <laughs> won't name names, that <laughs> big things. <laughs> And, and and the big things are getting hope because some decent looking brothers have smashed their back doors <laughs> in, you know. So so you got to understand why big things are think that some big things, not all of them, are <laughs> think they're eligible to to basically step up to man's what well, eight and nines. Do you know what I'm saying? Because some Do you know some what? brothers, we got to keep it hundred. I ain't got no dig discipline. It's just giving it away like it's a free gift. Do you know what it is? I think that's a big part. So I also found another stat. I think it links into what you're saying. So since 2008, the amount of men who are sub 30 um, reporting that they have not had sex or been in a sexual relationship has tripled and is now close to 30% since 2008. So I think, again, going back to what I was mentioning about hypergamy, I think there's a lot of the population of guys out there who just ain't getting or seeing anything. And when that happens, I think that's what also feeds into another point I'm going to mention, like this OnlyFans. I think women have now decided, oh, we've got this market. Let's monetize the thing. Like there's the first there now because I'm, a, you know, not naming any names, but a woman can look and, put some makeup on and say I'm a 10 even though she's probably a 4 and then be like I'm going to try and go for the 10 and when she just gets her back door smashed and then there's no call later to say let's be in a relationship you know she's friend zoning and putting all the other ones who are on her level out them guys are like left thirsty so the next thing they do is you know only fans let's go so again there's a market that'll be monetized because of this situation and I think that leads into what you were saying. I think there's a, there's a good population of guys out there who really don't have a choice. I was reading a blog, and the one point that sticked out to me is this guy, this Don was saying, he was saying, this is on the triple six thing. He was like, you know, I've got the triple six thing. And he goes, even then, like, I'm meeting chicks, but nothing that I really would say, yeah, this is somebody I want to get serious with. So I think that there's a whole separate market for just saying, right, I could smash through this thing, and that's it in comparison to saying what, you know, how we should be looking at things, I guess, is am I meeting somebody who I think there's something serious could happen from and, and develop? That makes sense. I, th I think there's a thing as well that like, I was going to say in terms of like simping and that. Pleasure P don't simp, but I did once. <laughs> there was one time. Just once. <laughs> there was just one time. Just one, one, one time. Just one time. You're, you're, one the, time. you're a better man than me. Better man than me, mate. One, no, no, one time. There's only one time I'd put myself in that bracket. I was, I was, I was a teenager back then, and and like, I learned from that very quickly, because uh, I was a chubby kid. And when she took my food, I was like, nah, there's a limit there. <laughs> like, you know, that was the <laughs> for me. Food got taken. She took your first love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's standard. I can't lie. If you saw me back in the day, it was food first. But one of the things I think about is like. What I observed in our time, yeah, you're right. We had like the R&B and Usher getting soaked in the rain and all that. But there was also a thing about confidence because I think the girls of our generation, like when you think about it, I think sex and things like that within our community sort of became something that was more mainstream by those type of songs, etc. Because before that, although yes, you had things, but it wasn't visualized as like, you know, Again, Usher running in the rain and whatever, and chicks were getting confidence on the back of that. And I think that translated because guys were like, you know, you are seeing those TV shows as well, not just the music videos. The TV shows were like Brandy was being chased by the Marcus Houston and all that, not really getting anywhere. And like the sort of nerdy guy was just getting brushed aside for like the American football star and all that. So all these things had an impact on confidence. And you were like, 
I don't know about you guys. I was trying to get in the football team. I was trying to be this, this, this. I wasn't thinking about chicks or nothing, but subconsciously, when I got into the football team, I got chicks. So it's like there was a whole playoff there as well. So I think the whole when you say it was design, it's also it was. You're right. It's almost bled into us, wasn't it? You didn't. You didn't have a choice. I think Pascal, you're touching on a very interesting point because I think simping to some extent, is linked to the degree of confidence that a man has. Yeah. I, th- I think the higher the confidence a man has, the less likely he's to simp, personally, because if he doesn't get what he wants, to some extent, he's like, okay, cool. If she's not on it, it's fine, because I rate myself. I know my work. So, exactly. so I can move on to the next thing. Mm. But if you don't have that degree of self-confidence in yourself, and you think, you know what, my chances are limited, I'm going to put all I can to try and get this thing, then that's when you're most likely to do some very questionable, simple things like, you know, dressing up in a tuxedo and giving away, you know, giving a girl flowers and chocolates and all that. <laughs> chocolates, you know right? I mean? Yeah. Like, you're just like rocking, you know, just rocking up and, um, <laughs> yeah. Just rocking up <laughs> the big box on the shoulder. But again, that. where would you get the idea from, though? You'd have yeah, seen it. Yeah, where would you get that idea to do you, something like that, Mike? Who, you well, would have seen it. You know, how would a, how would a <laughs> well, guy come to that conclusion? I'll be, I'll be honest. It's not logical. Just, just, just like, just like we've touched on it before, but I was raised from, from a youth from the Motown, which is all fake music about love that doesn't bloody exist, to the <laughs> R. Kelly, to the, I to keep on saying R. Kelly. I should move on from R. Kelly. Boys to Men, <laughs> and and, and, about, and all of these guys, the, right? So, and it's fantasy. At the time, really, when you think about it. Yeah, but at the time you didn't know. There were, different. you know, we didn't have the access to information that we do about R. Kelly. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, at yeah, the time, yeah. he was there, he was pioneering, you know. We yeah, didn't really exactly. understand what Aaliyah's age was. We didn't, you know, we heard rumours, but uh, whatever, it's a good, it's, you know, it's, it's a good song. Yeah. But now we know. Exactly. Do you know what? Also, though, is I think the problem was, is I think there was a transition. As we transitioned into technology, lots of the culture was still holding on to old school ideologies. So I think back in the day, simping actually was something that a woman would look at and say, yeah, this is good and would work. Do you get what I mean? If you put invested in a woman, you show this woman, look, it's all about you. Back in that culture where there were no mobile phones or, you know, your mobile phone only was black and white and did snake and there was no WhatsApp. You know, a woman would have looked at that and said, yeah, this guy's in for me. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm interested in this is what I'm going to do. I think the problem is, is culture just went, society just went from here to Yasso, just like that. And there was no time for an adjustment. And I think it went from women appreciating that to then looking and saying, yeah, what is that, brother? Well, but that's, you know what, but that's, a, that's a good point. But I would say, was it culture or was it a change within the women? Because really what simping is, is classic gentleman behavior Yeah. for women that aren't ladies. Yeah. I know, don't yeah. Want it, but you see, when, when there was a, the whole system of gentlemen, a gentleman exists because of a lady. Lady exists. Mm. Right? That's where the culture came from. You have the gentleman and the ladies. And then ladies acted a particular way, the gentleman acted a particular way, mm. and there was a contract. Right, so the modern age comes along, says that ladies is oppression. They change, but the gentleman they still bit, <laughs> you're still supposed to be still on. supposed to do, it, bro. That doesn't. <laughs> you broke the contract. Go on, go on, try. Your sound's gone, you're, try. What can't hear you, man. ITV me. turned that camera mic off, man. <laughs> ITV locked you off, bro. Man's calling ITV right now. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, can you can you sort out the, the audio, please? <laughs> You're speaking while, too while much Keith, truth there, man. Well, he's trying to sort out his mic. While fixing that, can I jump in on that? So, of course, of course. I, yeah. think, I think one of the um, things that ten. also has happened, though, is I think sort of through like the yeah, we got you back uh, track, mid two like. thousands. Yeah, yeah. I think like in the mid two thousands, I think men started to get more confident as well, though. I think we started to break away from that sort of 90s R&B era. Yeah. And I think we also um, started to challenge back more, which meant that those who didn't or those who weren't at that point then suffered as a consequence because 
I don't think there was as many guys doing that as not doing that, if that makes sense. Do you, I don't and, know, you know. I don't know, you know. Sorry to cut you, T. I don't know if I agree yeah. with that, you know. I, I think I think we, we were talking about this before in one of our previous podcasts. I think without overinflating our heads, I think we sit in a different demographic. Like, I think for you, like, you know, getting about in inverted commas wasn't 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 hard. Do you get what I mean? So when you're in that position, it's easy to say, "Yo, the simping thing, I'm done for that." Because you know you're you're confident, you know your work. If that makes sense. So I think naturally there's an evolution, and I think simping is a thing that we all have to do as a man. Like when we start off young, you don't know. You think because I think it's wired into us exactly like you, like what I was saying. It's like with the gentleman is in us, and the lady I think is supposed to be in a woman, and it takes you to get burnt as a youngin to say, "Yo, that <laughs> that thing didn't work too well," you know. But then I think what happens from that is then how society rates you and how you rate yourself. If you society rates you or you rate yourself well, i.e. you're still putting in good numbers, you quickly learn that, yo, I'm worth a lot more here, you know? So any of these girls that be mucking about, long for that, move on, move on. Do you get what I mean? Whereas another guy who's not in that position, he's maybe getting one kind of maybe, maybe, maybe a year. He's like, first, first, first. I need that, I need that, I need that. I'm not letting go. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I think yeah. there's a big divergence. There's a lot of guys who, as I was saying by the stats, are just thirsty and therefore they're like, is there a chance? Is there a chance? And there's yeah, another set of guys looking down at them saying, yo, you man need to and, behave. And that's the reality of most men. That ultimately, and that's why there's an entire market with OnlyFans, only fans. which is basically, you know, online freelance prostitution. Monetizing, you know, yeah. That's just what it's become. Try, you know, I know you wanted to before your mic died. All right, it's gone again, bro. <laughs> You're gone again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ITN News at 10. <laughs> yeah, man. Is it back? Yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. so, so, what is the cutoff point from being a gentleman to like. Oh, oh, bro, your mic, oh, man. That was a good, oh, a good question. What is the cutoff point from being a gentleman to a simp? To, to being a simp. Um, I think that's what you're Good, great questions. So, so we we try through thinking that what you were saying, um, or the question was just to reiterate, what is the cutoff point? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. Can yeah, you now. yeah. Yeah. Go on. yeah. So, what is the cutoff point? How many dates would you say would make? So, I'm trying to be a gentleman to this girl. I'm trying to like show her I've got in good intentions. I want to be with her. But what is the cutoff point before I'm a simp? I'll, I'll have a stab at that first. I actually don't think the measure is number of dates, dates. Yeah. yeah, or anything like that. It's about how reciprocal. Okay. Yeah, the I was just going to say the reciprocation and, and, the, yeah. and the purpose of it. Yeah. If, uh -huh. like now as a man, I go in with it very clear about what this is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This ain't, under. I'm not in this. I don't need for no more friends. I don't need female friends. I have actually yeah. no female yeah. friends. I don't need that. Yeah. Any yeah. whiff, any hint that that's what this is, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Glad. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, exactly. Being, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's honest, being clear because time is precious, being clear with your intention. Um, yeah. And you know quite quickly whether. Um, this woman, you know, is a lady or someone that's been that's been open, honest, and reciprocal to you, or whether again you are saved in the phone mm -hmm. as a free lift, free food, or free meal, Mister Free Meals. And that's that, unfortunately, oh, Mr. Free Meals is calling. <laughs> exactly, but unfortunately, that that is the culture that we've got where women have become predatory in a different way. There's, there's so many articles that talk about. Um, I saw one with this girl over the last however many years. She saved a certain amount of money just by not having to buy dinner yeah. because there was a lot of guys that she was preying on, right? Mm. That's just how it is. So now um, that that for me is key. It's the, the purpose and nature of that relationship and, you mm -hmm. know, whether it is reciprocal. Is she giving as well? Is she, or is it all just simply in and around her, what suits her, what she likes, what she wants to do. If you're in that position, 
you already lost. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. How about this, though? Can you be a married man and be a sim? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 200%. I would say, I would say, and I'm really glad you raised that, um, Mike, because I was going to move on to, to that topic, which I feel those are the true fallen soldiers amongst us <laughs> right it's but in all honesty i mean it's one thing to be single and a sim yeah right but to be locked it's in an, it's another <laughs> level oh, different, to oh, different be <laughs> married and a sim and and i saw recently on youtube there was a a, a, a married couple and this guy clearly had married a witch because <laughs> what she had done is there was a charm. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was a charm that she created, this witch. And and <laughs> on the chart, which is broken down into different rows, yeah? And they were based around things that the husband would needed to do. He would then earn little stars and credits. And once he got to a particular wow. number, he would get a uh, sexual favor or sexual attention. What's the charm, bro? No, but that, and she's online and like, she obviously she's she's smiling and you know like, like, literally you know Kevin Samuels just did you know it's a yeah. moment of silence for that guy. God rest that his soul. Is, that's a, that's a living hell. That's abuse, right? I mean, I like, take abuse. it as an extreme, but that yeah. is abusive, man. Right? And then she's like, "This is how this is how you treat your husband." Yay! You know, happy wife, happy life. Um, that's just not that true. One, that's just what, I'm glad true. you said that. That's one point I think also is a big point. I think that as a crock of absolute garbage, that sentiment, yeah. and that was pushed out a lot as well. You see it a lot over social media. You see it a lot on TV and, and sitcoms and stuff like this. Happy wife, happy life. Hell no. <laughs> I believe firmly in the fact that everybody owns their own happiness. So yeah. I shouldn't need to do oh, stuff. Yeah. That needs to engage your happiness. Yeah. You should be able to control that, and I should be able to control mine. And again, without getting too controversial, men, women, we're different. Like men are just more logical thinkers. We just think black and white. Women are more on the emotional side, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think we come together as a great bond together. But then mm -hmm. to say if you're more emotional, and then I've got to try and keep you happy. Like I was watching this comedy skit one time, and this guy was like, "How can you expect me?" to make you happy like sometimes you just start crying and when i ask you you don't even know why you're crying <laughs> you <know? laughs> so yeah like that nah, doesn't that doesn't run for me at all and i think there's like, again that's a that's a that's a lot of like societal like little push and whispers into your i'll keep your wife happy happy wife happy life i think i think the premise of most men effectively want to get married or are married is they want to be sexually exclusive to one woman right yeah so so to some degree we give up quite a lot of you know vaginal opportunity did you say sorry sorry to cut you mike did you say yeah. the man wants that or the woman wants that uh, i think to some extent we both want it or or i think sorry i think a man sacrifices you know to uh, some degree of sexual exclusivity because you know men to are naturally predisposed to be more promiscuous i think or are capable of doing so without the same emotional and there are say physical damage that a, a woman can sustain if she was to carry this fruit so from, from a man's point of view uh, and and i think what our dub said is actually true it's tragic when a man decides to give up these potential sexual escapades that the wild world could could give him especially when i think for sex, as far as men are concerned, is readily available. You can go on adult work, there's sex parties, sex clubs, there's a whole heap of places where you can get yeah. your dick wet. So for a man to decide, you know what, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna forego all of these, you know, sexual opportunities to focus on one woman. One woman yeah. When mm -hmm. that one lady decides to put unattainable goals for you to re you know to reach the cooch that you i think is just completely i think it's it's abusive i think it's, it's a human abuse, right yeah. violation yeah. really interesting because it is, no, it is abuse. No, it is, abuse. I'm, I'm not saying that my missus is there or any missus is there to just give up the pussy at will like it's a tap water i'm not yeah. saying that but what yeah. i'm saying is that it doesn't need 
the man to 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 do any more Indiana Jones like adventures to get you know that. <laughs> it's crazy. It's complete madness. But there are simping men in long term relationships. Long term relationships. Simping yeah. hard. Yeah. No, big time. Hard. And, and, you and say... do you know what's really concerning? Is that the woman that you are sipping for will probably give it up for an alpha, alpha male without yeah. having to do any of that. Doesn't even pay any mind. He would just be would, like, would you straight away? Would yeah. you say that yeah. most married modern marriages today are sim marriages, like sim Shit. relationships? It's a very, very good question. I, I wouldn't even go as far as saying marriage because marriage is in decline. But let's just say long-term committed relationships. In some, in some yeah. groups. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying, some, you know. But yeah. yeah. It's a very, very, very good point. And I'll tell you why I think it's a good point. Because to some degree, the, the, the balance has tilted in favour of the women. Irrespective mm -hmm. of whether you're in, a, you're in a common law relationship or you're in a marriage. If you make one faux pas, one faux pas, you could put you could be out on the streets. Yeah. You could be living back with your moms at the age of forty plus, or sitting in a bed sit somewhere in South with a guy called BW. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do. You don't want to do that. So to some degree, and, and you could be the main breadwinner. You yeah. could be actually the majority shareholder in the household, right? Yeah. And because of that, because of that, men to some degree feel that they need to. Each, been, you know, feel like they meet they, they they need to be in check, you know, for for reasons that really should not be there. Because the power and the law supports women in all cases. You can yeah. have an argument with your long term missus. If the police come and knock at your door, you know, if they see your brother like Doc with his big biceps, big shoulders, I say, look, mate, you, you need to leave. You need come to leave, back bro. tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same thing yeah. with Pascal. Same thing with Trust. Same thing with you, Adults. Although you know in this country. But I'm sure they're coming for you wherever you're hiding. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's whatever it is, whatever the case may be, it, it is and, and there's been there's been times where even me, my relationship I'm like, raw, if this argument carries on, she could just call nine one one casual. Fez will take me away. Take Put me, away. I, I know men will say spend the weekends we, themselves. We just lock you up yeah. tonight, bro, let you cool down yeah. and <laughs> it happens on a regular basis. So, so we, men can't even be men anymore. They can't even express their, their, oh, their masculine yeah. energy. And it oh, doesn't bro. necessarily have to be violent. Yeah. Just be you know masculine what's, energy. What you're it's, saying, Mike, is so good. And I really agree with that. I think it's got to the stage where you, you can't even express. I think a woman can express more masculine mm -hmm. energy than you can yeah. as a man. I can see a woman yeah. slam her door, mm -hmm. throw something across the room. The mm. moment you go and brisk past the door yeah. a little bit and it catches <laughs> too hard, bro, you it's like you mashed up the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think the society at the moment, women can show much more masculine energy calmly than a guy could ever dream of. Everywhere. It's in the workplace. <laughs> it's in the streets. It's in your house. It, 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 it's as if, you know, men are being told to become more feminine. Yeah. Feminine. Yeah. And women was, are able to shout and scream at you. Yeah, and women are talking about masculine. Yeah, and, and that's, going to, that's going to create simps. Like you, you're bound to create a nation of simps when people, when when society is becoming, is shaping itself in that way. Yeah, it's inevitable. But do we need? Yeah. Do we? But do we need to be? And going back to the point about how some communities, you know, marriage is going down. But do we need to be a bit more specific? Because this seems to be a uh, the true pandemic, but only is really hitting certain parts of the world hard. Um, yeah. And the, 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 the point I'd make with that is when we talk about men and women, really what we're talking about are Western men and women. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you, if, you, if you look at the, if you begin to talk about the average Russian, the average Russian woman or Russian man, or the average Chinese man or, the, you know, um, uh, Chinese woman or, uh, you know, uh, man or woman from the, from Africa, the continent. Yeah. Do we see simping in the same way? And is that actually beginning to have a much more fundamental problem and, and risk within society? Because if it, if it, the, the if we if the men are weakened under mm -hmm. the women. 
where does that put the men of that nation in comparison to other men of, from other nations? Yeah. Do you know, I think that's, that's a really good point. I think the, the, the big thing is, I think a lot of this to do is to do with capitalism. Mm -hmm. Again, I think having women push the rhetoric that women should be independent and boss bitches and, and all this stuff and get out to work and then saying, you know, equal rights, we want equal pay and stuff like that. Um, which I'm not saying they don't, they don't deserve. We do the same job hundred percent. Why should you not be getting paid the same? But I think that whole rhetoric has created a system where before, I guess a woman would have less. Now they have more. Yeah. And I think I've, I've heard a few people say this and I agree. I think women have started becoming the man that they wanted to, to, to meet. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, so they can't be on my level because hypergamy, I need a man who's better. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you start making more money, like, as a man, your pool gets bigger. If I'm being re realistic, you know, you can yeah. choose from more women. You get more options as a woman. I think if you, your money starts getting bigger, you, you don't really. And I don't think that's because a guy would turn you away. I think just as a woman, you just, your standards go up. Yeah, and, up, just, yeah. up. and I think therefore in the Western world, I guess there is more of a push, more of a drive for capitalism more like yeah let's get out there let's get you working you can make your own money you can be an independent woman and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff and i think it's quite funny because there's a lot of data to show that the feminist movement and women who kind of adhere to that that viewpoint aren't any happier in fact you know if you look at statistics on antidepressant usage and, and drug usage and things like that it's up in women in the Western world. So they're showing this, the clinical signs that actually they are unhappier in this in these places Position. of being independent. Mm. And I think that's one of the big problems in Western world when you compare to, 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 to other societies. Other I think parts. that's added fuel to it. Yeah, and I think, I think you raise a good point bringing the economic part into it because ultimately the reason it's so geared towards women is because they're the biggest commercial spenders. If you look at, if you look at um, personal uh, credit debt, it's overwhelmingly owned by women. Women. Yeah. So companies know, you know, salespeople, it's a basic thing that they're told. If you, if you call a household, um, speak to the wife. Don't speak to the husband. Yeah. Right, get to the wife. <laughs> uh, that's a tactic that they use because it works. Yeah. Right? It, it, it is... They, the sales are geared towards emotion, not, you know, rational Logic. reasoning. It's an impulse. So they go to the, to the one that's more inclined to that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, but it's a short term gain because going back to, to, um, uh, Mike's point about the fear that a lot of men live in within their marriage. That ultimately comes from it's only the power of divorce, really. That's what that's what guys are afraid of. That's what being afraid ultimately of. Right. totally destroyed, destroyed through divorce because one day she's what Coach Greg think? Adams is the best. Not happy, and then that's it. You don't say you don't actually have had to have done anything. You could yeah. do it. Ev everything, right. everything. <laughs> 100% and the power of I'm not happy so it does put it does put my men into uh, on the back foot and uh, in a passive position with the lie of um, happy wife happy life because ultimately she's never really happy <laughs> right she's got your balls so, that's, that's, that's so it's a losing, it's a losing she, she's game. got your balls she's she's castrated you in the marriage <laughs> at any point in time mm. she can just go snip <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and i think that's the big thing so just just throwing it out there so what do you guys think so how could marriage change that would make it i guess healthier or kind of reshape the balance change law I think absolutely that's what it comes yeah. to i would say the issue is not okay. marriage the issue is divorce right yeah mm. it's the it's an industry that's mm. the key thing when when if you people love to talk about marriage as a partnership i don't believe that's what it is but let's just say that if you're in a partnership with someone 
and they have financial incentive to yeah. leave at any yeah. point and then take everything and then have you pay for everything, but you don't have that incentive. Of course, it, it's a system set up to fail. Yeah. Uh, and that isn't to say everyone that gets married is going to fail, far from it, but it doesn't help. Yeah. Right. I think so that, I that think, comes into a. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I just think in terms of there really needs to be more reform when it comes to the, to that because it's now divorce for divorce sake. People push for divorce because it's it make it makes money. Lawyers make mm -hmm. money. The, the 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 there's an entire industry around it. So how can a, a, a relationship, a marriage, survive when one is so strongly incentivized to leave because your your house becomes her house your kids become her kids your income yeah. part of that becomes her income right <laughs> um you very very rarely you only see it now in celebrities with females that have a lot of money they're they're now feeling the bite yeah. and everyone's in outrage when, when it happens yeah. to them right <laughs> but it happens but a woman like happen what? is he taking off my stuff happening. Exactly. <laughs> what we have, and I really think it is, it is one of the cancers of, of our culture, because it's destroying the family, which destroys society, is, um, you know, ask yourself this. I know people don't like it, but how many men have entered the Forbes rich list through divorce? Exactly. None. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't even, I don't need to ask. The 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 uh, opposite. Of that How it be? Because yeah. I, I think you know where I'm going. With that. No, no, but that just that just goes to show how much of an industry of wealth distribution this is, and the and, is, and yeah. the fear that a lot of guys are under because whew, it's you know a lot of if step out of line that's it. Let me ask you guys <laughs> a question quickly. Go on. Yeah. Um. So. Who do you, this is an interesting statistic. So who do you think have the highest divorce rates out of um, men who marry men and women who marry women? Women that won't marry women. Uh, yeah, women that marry women. women. All of the brackets, women who marry yeah. women have the highest divorce rate. Out, this is including heterosexual marriages as well. And out of men who marry men, they have the lowest divorce rate. Yeah, <laughs> <Isn't> <laughs> that but and and the thing about that is, and I, I, I remember hearing that uh, it's it's equivalent when it comes to abuse cases, um, and of all the groupings, whether it be heterosexual, homosexual, male and male, um, homosexual, female and female, that the highest rates are with the the lesbian couples. So the thing is, yeah. if 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 men were as abusive, right, as society says we are, mm. we'll be, why yeah. isn't the data showing? Yeah, the data showing. Remember? It should it <laughs> should be the male homosexual couples that are yeah. the most abusive. Yeah, if we're the most mm. abusive. But the data, <laughs> the data shows the that data. they are the couples that stay together. <laughs> the lowest divorce rate. <laughs> How that is peaceful. <laughs> Mad. It's mad, isn't it? I read that, that isn't guys right. like, uh... <laughs> like, I guess I think what all to oh, sorry, Pascal, you go bro. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say I just wanna go back to that 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 point you were saying about um living in fear. Like if you're married living in fear. Like I I've been married ten years and I, I've never I've never had that cross my mind. Um that consequence of divorce or anything like that, if I'm honest. But I think Can I ask that's you a because... question, Pete, on, on yeah. that quickly? And I think I kind of know this answer just because I think you said it before. Who makes more money, if you don't mind me asking, out of you, you and your wife? Um, me. You do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. No, but, but, like... uh, but pleasure. I've not lived in that fear either, but I'm cognizant of, of it because I yeah. know people that have those concerns, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I... So I understand that piece, but I think one of the reasons why I don't is because she's not from the Western yeah. world. Uh, yeah, uh, what I was going to say is that yeah, you know, yeah. so, uh, I, I think there's a side. Yeah. There's the, there's I think the if I actually tried to walk away, 
I genuinely think she'll drag me kicking and screaming back because yeah. their mentality is very different. It's more Ooh. about you build a well, family, yeah, you build a yeah. life, etc. That's it. It's wrap. Well, and you don't, yeah, you, yeah, don't you don't, don't go nowhere. It. That's it. It's done. Yeah. We mm. work this out. And I that, hate you, but we're that, working this out. Well, mm. life. That is exactly. But also you've got your family unit. Okay. Yeah. So you can't you cut you're in this, right? You're not just walking away, and neither is she, because the family around you <laughs> yeah. say, go back to your husband, yeah. go back to your go wife. To, to your and that's wife. how it should be. Mm. In, in the modern era, especially, you know, um within um certain communities, uh, I won't go into detail on that's not that that's that's gonna, gonna, poor, gonna... but you get the opposite. You get leave him, girl, you can be yeah. better. Exactly. Right? You can level up. You know, it's the exact opposite of yeah, how it, it should is. be. Do you know exactly right? what and, you got, and, and it's not it's not like these these women are married. Yeah, they're, they're that's, tearing that's the, that's the thing. apart. Yeah. I was yeah. reading a statistic here and it was interesting. They did a test, so the women didn't know what they were being tested on. And what they did is they took images of women, women with different lengths of hair. And they, they had women, men score women and say, you know, who's a one, who's a 10. Yeah. And they noted that women would consistently score, women who've consistently scored eight and above, they would ask them, should we, would you ask them to cut their hair? Do you think that's a good hairstyle? And the women that scored eight and above, most of the girls would say cut their hair. Knowing that as men, we look at that as attractive. Yeah. And I was like, that's amazing. And that, that's a kind of a statistic that goes to show that often women will give advice to their friends when it's that not the... isn't beneficial for them, a... that yeah. actually no. holds or hinders them and holds them back. Yeah. Right? But it will be disguised in you go, girl, you know, you be independent. Yeah, you don't yeah. need him. He's not making you happy. You go. Slay. And they have no yeah. experience of marriage, no, no experience of life, and no inner workings of the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad. No, absolutely. And it, it goes back to, to a the point that we were making before about, um, you know, a group of girls trying to push you to maybe the larger girl, right? <laughs> and, I, I, and you see it all the time. You see, you see an attractive girl with an, oh, another girl just completely different in terms of attraction. And I'm sorry, but I think some a lot of these girls they do that purposely. Hundred percent do that purposely yeah. because of the, with the juxtaposition, they naturally look better. They look way better they, than they I'm, are. Yeah, way way better. Because next to someone that's not looking very good. It's very simple, and um, I think there's a difference in human nature with men and women, which is, you know, a more mature guy, you're more inclined to come if you come across a younger guy to give him good advice and say, bro, yeah, don't, yeah. don't do uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Talk. I did that. You don't want to listen. This you, to do that, bro. you see this, right? We're more likely to yeah. do that as guys. Women on our hand, very yeah. envious. And I, 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 a more mature woman and a younger woman, there's envy there. You, you hear that envy. even with them and their mothers, mm. yeah, right? Yeah. They, they will say they will just good advice. Actually, if you cut into it, so mm, true, bro. Yeah. Do you know how many it's situations so I see? Yeah, I look at the mum. Yeah, and the mum is in their like seventies, sixties, single, no man at home, and she'll be yeah. telling her daughter, "No, you need to do this. You shouldn't be doing this for him, and washing this, and doing that, and doing this." And I'm looking, and I'm like, as a man, you would look and say, "Are you going to take advice, even though she's your mother, from somebody mm. who is obviously unhappy and single in yeah. that age, and think that's good advice?" You know, but that's what they would do. And I think it's horrible to say, but I think even mums are guilty of telling their daughters how to lead their Sabotage. life, not with the right Sabotage. intent. Mm. The yeah. other thing is with They're that is generationally, generous. as generations progress, I think what you find is as well, women become more expressive, et cetera, et cetera. And you find like the elder generation, that's where the envy comes from because they couldn't do the sort of things that a girl now could do. Mm. And therefore yeah, it's like, sense. Well, actually, da, 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 da. it's almost like pulling them back, isn't it, really? But, oh, how about this, Pleasure P? How about the fact that sometimes you've got the Marjays who's failed by making the wrong choices and yeah. doesn't want her child, especially her daughter, to exceed her and to better than her. 
So yeah. sometimes she she sabotages almost her mm. daughter so that she can find some solace and some comfort in knowing, well, oh well, you know, you did, I didn't make it, you didn't make it. Let's all be miserable together, you know, because you do yeah, as as, as our dog says, my, you do have mothers who are yeah, jealous yeah, of I, their daughter's successful relationship my, because they couldn't do it. They couldn't get hundred mm-hmm. percent. They want to mm-hmm. go around to their daughter's house every day. And they don't want a man in that house blocking that and them getting a relationship. So yeah. why are you doing this bit? Don't wash his clothes. Don't cook food for him. Don't treat him like a man. 100%. It's sad. It's yeah. sad. And it's sad that, you know, it, it seems to be something that affects, um, I don't you know, I don't like saying the black community because it's too broad. Um, but, you know, um, certain black communities, especially in the Western world, seems to yeah. be deeply affected by this deeply to the point where this Definitely. dysfunction is is pushed is the norm is the norm mm. you know it's almost you know especially young girls are encouraged don't 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 encourage him don't give him a big care don't say mm. there's no words of encouragement and of, of love in that way yeah. yeah um and that inherently distorts the relationship and pushes men away. It just pushes men away. Because yeah. if you, yeah. if you, you know, date or have experienced women from other cultures, you begin to realise yeah, how short sold we've been in many instances. Bro, 100. 100. But also, I, I don't think that women understand their motivational power sometimes. Because when a woman praises you, right? So even, if, let's just say, from a simple perspective, when a man, when a man that's decent looking, decent, educated or whatever, earns, you can tell the guy's a trial, right? It's not lazy, it's just about his business and he's, up and he's trying to demonstrate that, look, I want to take care of you, I want to be with you. You know, if, if, if a woman can, can appreciate what this guy is doing, the endeavours that he's doing, yeah. that, and, and when that is accepted or, when it, in the, or certainly when, he's at, when it is understood by a guy, the motivation that gives a man, that guy will walk, will go through walls for a woman. Like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it, it genuinely helps a guy achieve things that you know he wouldn't be able to achieve without that motivational power. There's there's a story in the Bible um, when Saul and David went to war, and the um, Saul killed one thousand, but David killed ten thousand, and Saul got vexed because chicks were singing songs about who the biggest baller was because you know David could kill 10,000 soldiers and sort of only killed one and that enraged him because and, and what I got from that story is the fact that women can be empowering sometimes when they understand their role when they understand their duty you know yeah. as as you know as a as, as a reliable partner that pushes you that motivates you and and all, all guys essentially are looking for really when you're courting a girl is when you're making your advances, you want her to kind of say, all right, cool, I'll take a couple of steps towards you, but I'm not going to go too quickly because I want to make sure your intentions are cool and that you don't really just want to hit that and, and run. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So what I find with guys who are trying to get girls' attentions is, okay, do the effort, you know, engineer the effort and, mm-hmm. and try to get to know the girl. But at the same time, the women should also appreciate what the guy's doing because you know what, you know what it takes to go and chirp a team? It, it takes yeah. a lot of self confidence, mm-hmm. self belief. Sometimes you got to put your ego on the line because you know other people are watching you. Her brothers are watching you. Do you know what I'm saying? Your <laughs> brothers are watching you. Yeah. It's not an easy <laughs> thing to do, and women take these things for granted. They just think yeah. that mm-hmm. you know what this guy, you know, he, this guy just does this on a regular basis. Just stand very, up very few of us do that. Very few of us go out and chirp girls because we ain't got the confidence. We haven't got the resources to actually do so. So yeah. when a man is doing it, what we asking the ladies to do is if this is not the guy you want at the beginning, just lock it off straight away. Don't encourage the man to mm-hmm. go, to, to, to pursue you to the yeah. point where you, you're taking his money, you're taking him out for dinner and this and that. Because generally, from, from our point of view, the way that men work, right, as you said before, Doc, we're logical creatures. If I go to the gym five times a week for six months, I'm going to get wedged. So I'm applying the same level of enthusiasm when I see a chick. If I see a thing and I'm chirping, 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 and I'm pursuing her, I expect after, you know, several times of doing this to, to reach a crescendo where we're going to finally going to get somewhere. Yeah. But if the, if the girl is taking advantage of me and not really giving me the signs that, yo, 
what you're doing is in vain. You know, I got, this, 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 there needs to be a point where I realise, okay, I'm being taken advantage of, or she's playing hard to get, mm. or she's just literally a bitch and just want to take my dough. You know, it's until I realise that I'm a dickhead. Yeah. Mm. The thing, the is, thing is, is, you know what? What you said about realising is... Oh, God. Yeah, I was going to say, is a lot of women don't see anything wrong with what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They see they, it right. Literally, they'll say, we're friends. We're just friends. We're just friends. Yeah. Mm. There's nothing wrong with being friends. Have you guys seen that little skit? <laughs> yeah, I think right? I posted on my friends. social media recently about the guy <laughs> who goes to, like, a comedy show and the comedian, yes. um, he asked the guy, crowd, he's like, oh, are you two together? And she goes, no, we're just friends. And the guy already starts looking awkward, like, oh, this is long. And he goes, oh, if you're just friends, he goes, he points to the table next to him, he goes, do you like him? And she was like, yeah, it's cute. And he goes, get up, get up, go and sit next to her. The whole crowd starts cheering. You can see her face. She gets vexed. Mm-hmm. And he goes, if you're friends, you wouldn't mind him going over there. And he goes, and the bill, you're half in that. And she, her face she changed. Started. He goes, no, 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 you guys are just friends. So if you're friends, you're half in yeah. that bill. And the whole crowd erupts. And I'm like, yeah, that guy, you can see um, that poor you know guy what? has been in the friend zone for years. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen that video. It's great. And when I was watching that, I, I felt really good watching it as well. But then there's a part of me that said, you bunch of hypocrites, because all the women in that audience are applauding. They've all done it as well. They do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just that they weren't caught out. It's just yeah. a, a natural thing. If, if, if given the opportunity... They will, they will take the time and the attention, uh, the validation, the advice, all of the positive things that we bring as men, the problem solving, right? Mm. This goes back to what we were saying about simping, right? When I was when I was in, in the simp era, yeah, key to problem solver. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. saved in the phone as problem solver, right? Super saver. <laughs> because <laughs> we, we super saver. After a problem, I know who to speak to, yeah. right? <laughs> and that Reese. those qualities <laughs> should should be with with the woman you're with, not yeah. just for everyone to to draw from. No, and mm-hmm. I think that there's a there's you know especially in our culture within the Western world, a man's value is purely financial. That's such a lie. That is yeah. absolutely such a complete falsehood. We bring so many things. Our reasoning, problem solving. You know yeah. how many times. It, um, I've had to say, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. We're not buying, you don't need that. Don't. Why are you trying that? It's not happening. All of these things we bring along, but... Even like evidence, the evidence that's out there that shows that households without fathers where kids are raised do a whole lot worse. Even if you take the mother out of the equation and you leave the father in, kids still do so much better. It's not just the financial resources that we bring 100 percent. it's reasoning it's mentality that's why together we are a great pairing yeah. it's a shame i feel like society is like we were saying earlier trying to make men more feminine women more masculine it just makes everybody upset <laughs> really i think got... so, sorry, Doc. Oh, my... sorry i didn't mean to cut you yeah. finish your point finish no no, no point. That, that was it that was it I'm a... I, I was going to ask another question um on the controversial side of things but can a simp be taken advantage of by both a woman and his mother? I'd say, yeah. Shall I, re- shall yeah. I repeat the question? Yeah. Sorry, try if you're smiling. Well, you, you, you see, you're smiling like you know people that have been doing that. Yeah, uh, that's just, you, yeah you got that <laughs> grid, bro. <laughs> you got that grid. No, the, the reason why I'm saying that is are, are, are simps made? Or do people, people become simps? Because the the issue is this, because we've got to really look at the root, you know, as to why some men are simps or professional simps <laughs> without realising that they're simping. But is it, because, is it because it comes from a family milieu that's essentially encouraged or nurtured that behaviour, where when they leave the family home, they take on this, they almost become... Uh, subjugated by, you know, women taking advantage of them, and 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 and, and I, th- I think I hope I'm articulating my point properly. Yeah, no, you are, you are, you are. Yeah, you are. What, yeah. what I'm trying to get at effectively is that there are, you know, a family, um, there 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 are family structures effectively where 
single let's just say let's just take a single mother for instance who's had a failed relationship and she's trying her very best to stop or to or especially if she has a son yeah she wants her son to become this you know loving caring man as he grows up and she almost feminizes him in a way that she nurtures him to the point where he has to do everything for his mother and and because he's been brought up in such a way and he finds another woman or when he goes out into the sexual marketplace to find a female he's he's never really been taught the art of you know being a man in his endeavor to to, to call a, a lady yeah. and as a result of that becomes <laughs> becomes a subject leaves a lifelong career as a simp but he's both simping for the <laughs> Oh, Mike, I think you you literally yeah. beautifully answered your own question because I was about to say you literally the same thing. I think our culture, especially in black culture, um, mm. I know that's vast and and why shaking. So I'm talking mainly about you know in the Western world, there was all that whole rhetoric about being an independent black woman, and mm. you know yeah. even when the man was around, I think even if you wanted to claim benefits and stuff like that, that man still had to be hidden. So there was a big big drive for women to be that way, mm. and I think. In that essence, women have placed a lot into raising kids without a man's presence. And I think it's vitally important, especially when boys are growing up, that they see a man and see how that man checks their mum. And yeah. is in those elements. I don't agree mm -hmm. with arguing around kids, but I think it's important that kids, especially boys, see that actually dad checks mum and... Mm -hmm prohibit certain things and shows because that goes in them and then they grow and recognize yo everything a chick says to me i don't go with because just on the basis of what we've been through already in this conversation when we speak yeah. about it in general terms women tend to be more emotional if you mm. allow that leadership you're going to end up in in hell of flames you know you're going to be in debt you're going to be <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, so it's important for World kids to be able to see that being checked like no that's not going to get bought you know, mm. when emotions get kicked out how does dad deal with the emotions no nope, that's not happening you know and if that all that feminine energy just is poured out and there is no masculine to say nope no nope, no nope, i agree with you 100 what you say that and that's why i think simping was so big because it was just injected in and there was nobody no guys allowed to and even the guys that were there that were trying to stop it potentially society was just clipping their balls like no independent yeah. women you can't, you know, you're not better than a woman and all that rhetoric. So it's very hard even for guys at that point to say, yo, like, that can't run. I think, yeah. I think I actually was probably raised in a household like that. So Same. My, uh, my mom is black. My stepdad is white. And, I, and I, I'll put it out there. My mom dominated that relationship. Like, that's the only word I could 100%. use to describe it. She all the relationships I've seen my mom being, she's dominated the thing and <laughs> yeah <too close>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think like the reason why obviously me and my mom don't talk i've mentioned some of the stuff in the past what's happened and i think a lot of it is because she wanted me to be a certain way and, and i haven't yeah. done that and i think that's probably why like i quite quickly clocked on what simping was because now that i think back i, I witnessed it if i'm honest yeah Mm. I got, I got, I, I don't same. understand why that exactly man is there. The if I'm honest with you, I got exactly no. I, I, I look, as an adult, I would have left years ago if I was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but he's, you know, <laughs> he's from, he was from a different generation, and that you know that was very much when you get married, you you, you stay in it and you and you work to it. But um, yeah. Mike, are you saying, in summary, are you saying single mothers? or dominant mothers, because the, the example that P's given was it wasn't a single parent household, but it was dominated by the, the mother. Are you saying that single parent mothers or dominant mothers raise sims? I, I, I think that it is very possible. It is possible. That the, that the scenario that you just did, you know did, did discussed or illustrated could create sims because one thing we've got to give simps credit for, simps are very patient. Yeah. You know, because because simps do things that most self controlled natural men will say, Bun that. Bun that. I'm gone. Do you know what it is? They make, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's making excuses to cover it. I was going to say correct. this a lot earlier on. You make, you make but excuses. That's an, but that's to... a female emotion you know, when you think about it, pleasure, P. Yes. You well. know, because women, women will, will, lie themselves to your friends and you think, thinking, you know, it's okay. You think we'll get better. It's okay. Yeah. I just, you know, hang in there, girl. Hang in there. 
and and when a, when a mother essentially teaches you to 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 be patient beyond the realm of logic, yeah, it becomes <laughs> you you can become a simp very yeah. very easily and, because and, and you know I think you, the you thing is when and the thing is when it's when it's your own mom. Mm. It's a different yeah, yeah. relationship, right? It's you're you're, really you're in that house, so you ha- you're forced almost to find that understanding until the point yeah. where you say enough's enough. Mm. Yeah. Of course, and and what do dominant women do? They they erode every form of masculinity that you have to the point where you can become docile and you become controlled. And and simping, really, that's what that's what simping is. Is something mm. is that docility in in a man. Where he's essentially taking things that he yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't normally take. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what I mean? We, which is why mm. it's important to have the brotherhood and to talk about right. the situation because you're, there will be one of your brethren will say, "Pleasure, Pete, are you mad, bro? But give me you, give me your phone. We're deleting this girl's number today. No, today, I'm going yeah. out. I'm gonna and we're gonna link a new thing, and you're gonna put your energy into this new thing. I'm gonna appreciate you because. Mm. Brothers who, who are self assured don't play those games. Yeah, yeah. They ain't got time. You either like me, you don't like me. Don't like me you know, at all, don't man. take advantage of me, or don't take advantage of my good nature. Yeah. Because you yeah. know, I'm trying to give you all of me, but you're now taking advantage of me. You know, and and sometimes you, if you've got if you've got a man that teaches you what a man is and the yeah. importance of being a man and accepting rejection as a man, because that's yeah. what men have to do. Men yeah, have exactly. to be responsible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Being a man is about being responsible and accepting yeah. things sometimes that are outside your control. Yeah. yeah. I say you this know. all the time to my boys. You have to, sometimes I see them get emotional. And I say, it's good to express your emotions. But I say one thing to them after I said, you see these books that you're studying, they don't care how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're done with the emotions, they, you still need to have an answer for that. Mm. So please go through mm. your emotions and we can talk about it. But make sure when that's done, you still come with the answer. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I realized also, I think in today's culture, I think it actually needs to be the reverse. If I was giving a younger me advice, if yeah. your woman isn't simping on you, you got to keep it moving, bro. In exactly. today's society, she's got to be way more into you. Otherwise, you got to keep it moving. That was going to be the point I was going to talk, touch on, Doc. So can, can women be allowed to simp on guys? Because to some degree, we would find that quite attractive. When yeah. you think about it, a feminine yeah. woman that is showing you all kinds of love and writing all kinds of poems and shit about you, that that mm-hmm. that'll make a brother feel fantastic when you think about it. Yeah. Because so, it's, 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 it's the law is, of women, two averages, isn't it? But yeah. Can it's women tend, all, be, tend to happen? Yeah. Can women be simps? And I don't... And the, so that's the question. Can women, can women simp? But really, isn't, isn't that the dynamic it should be. To, yeah. Isn't yeah. simping basically the man taking on the feminine role in the relationship? And should it be the yeah. other way around? It should be. It should Best be the case way, scenario yeah. would be that, yeah. definitely. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That's what you're being. You're being a bit of a woman, yeah. aren't you, when you're simping? Yeah. Mm. You're simping. Expression, emotion, getting <laughs> all this. I, I was watching one guy. He was saying, that, yes. and I agree with this actually, that women can't really. And I'm being very generalistic here, so please don't shoot me, please, women and my followers. But women really don't like a full plate. A woman doesn't want to invest in four guys. You know, if she's yeah. into you, then everybody else goes. It's <laughs> true, and it's that yeah. one don. So it, it shows that's what's in them. They want to to simp in inverted commas and give that guy that attention. Yeah, if it's cool. the reverse. It, it, that it, I don't. I just generally don't think in today's society women actually find it attractive. They like the resources some women do, and they like what comes from it. So they will continue to say, "Oh yeah, I'll take it," and we're friends. And you know, they'll play the yeah. card knowing that they're kind of continually like dragging you along. But I think it's the flip, really. Yeah. Once a woman's inve- emotionally invested like that, and they're like, "Where is he? I haven't seen him, and he's not messaged me today." They ain't thinking about the other don and the other five dons that are pinging them <laughs> off, saying, "Good morning, how are you, babe?" <laughs> you know, they're getting left on red. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah no, I, I think a woman knows when they when they see the one that they want to invest their time in and energy in. I think they are hundred yeah. percent know, and mm-hmm. they make it very very clear, like. Exactly. Without baiting it, I've seen one where, when you see them uh, at face value, you think, 
rah, they're quite tough. They're quite, you know, um, yeah. dominant as a person, etc. And then getting she to know the other you. side, yeah. completely different, like not, yeah, not what you would expect at all. Like literally completely. See that soft side. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think it's, it's something that can be unlocked when they see exactly what it is that they go for. And I think the thing is, we touched on it, I think, in one of the early episodes. Nowadays, it's like a woman has the options. It's mm. there, like on their phone. That's I think like you said, phone, yeah. they wake up in the morning, the options are there on the phone. And actually, I'd imagine this. I'm going to sound like a simp now, aren't I? But it, I imagine when you've got that many options, to filter it out is not easy because how do you decipher it? Yeah. yeah. How do you Especially actually break when... it down? Especially when you're in genetics, like I was saying earlier, that you naturally are hypergamous. You want to get the best option. If your inbox constantly is filled, you're, you're overwhelmed. Like, oh, but that one. Yeah, how do you actually... The grass is always greener here and here and here yeah. and here. So, you know, it's a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just mindful of time, guys. So, um, I guess the um, mic has is, mic is drop, dropped out. Uh, maybe we'll be back <laughs> sometime. <laughs> at some point uh, but maybe yeah. some final let me give you some quick figures before we, before we cut something yeah, else that i found out that i wanted to, to 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 see if you guys could could guess so um i spoke earlier a bit about only fans yeah. yeah so how much money do you think only fans put out in uh 2022 as how, much, they, how much how much uh, revenue was made? Three hundred um in the billions, so I'll say five billion. So, you know, that's a that's a good guess. Close. Two point five billion. Imagine wow. two point five billion. When it started was that gross in was that... Yeah, gross. When it started in its infancy, it was around no so no, sorry, that's twenty twenty two, two point five billion in um, 2018, it was 5.8 million. Look at that growth. Mad. Wow. Lockdown, innit? Well, you know, the, obviously <laughs> the pandemic, did, the pandemic did, did drive Trust a me. lot of that. Right? It was one of the so, fastest growing online companies with a monthly growth rate of 70% at one point. Um, in 2024, though. Well. It's all amateur stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know is what's it? funny no, is I'll be honest with you, I've never been on it. Oh, fans, it? Like got <laughs> a when I was reading these numbers, I was like, these are, you know, as man says, these are these are big numbers. So I thought, let me just click on this thing quickly. And like I didn't go deep in, but most of it was like ambiguous, like women basically are with boob, not boobs out, but you know, doing yeah. normal things, but obviously you can see they were sexualizing it a bit. And I was like, yeah. is the first that deep? That man's is yeah. like watching someone cook a dish, but their boobs or their cleavage is showing. <laughs> and, yeah, I guess because they, they just... But if, they, if, they, if they've never had a woman you know, cooking a dish for them, though, yeah. that's probably why. They've yeah, never had it. Their mom. So, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a sad, sad thing, but it it's is... hard, man. Well, you know, they love, they love to say that it's, it, you know, it's independence <laughs> and it's just uh, um, content, just filming. My fact, it's prostitution, it's sex work. You know, you know that's ultimately what it is. So oh, you don't have it to is. be doing that on there. You could just be cooking. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. At least, at least the streetwalkers, at least the streetwalkers are honest about what they do. Yeah. Right. No, this generation will do that, but then won't really call it what it is. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Um. You know, and. My thing is just be just be transparent with what it is. Just be honest with what it is. And some actually, the ones that are honest don't really don't care. I think there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and and that ultimately goes back to what we were saying before um, about the culture and society and where it's going. You know, when most when and the point I was making about with other men. If you if you look at the strength of a nation, it really comes down to the the men that are willing to die for it. Yeah. Okay. Not live for it. It's the willing to die for it, and that's why you've die got it, yeah. you know we've got the the what is it the the um, British military starting to consider conscription 
mm. um, mandatory yeah. Thing, yeah. joining joining the the army because we're finished. And, um, Mike and I were having a conversation, which is the problem that you've got now is because you removed the family. See, back in the day, the guys that went to war, they were fighting for their wives and their children their and their families yes. or the idea that they were going to have that, right? Yeah. Now in this age, most men know it ain't going to happen because they're all running after the 1% guy that they're never going to get, okay? Yeah. Um, so you've got, you've got a group of guys that are not willing to die for the nation. You've got a group of men that are more mercenary in thinking. Yeah. It mm. weakens the nation. And that, and it goes back to what I was saying before, you don't see this culture as heavy in other parts of the world, and that's not by mistake. Um, so simping does come at a cost. Yeah. Huge. Um, so final thoughts. Mike's back so, with us. Yeah. Yeah, apologies, mate. I've got technical difficulties, but made it back. I was um, going to say, I noticed we did in one of our podcasts before, I think it was one of the early ones we said, and I like that. What would the advice be to a younger me? A younger me was an Egypt. I'm not going to lie. I like said that. It was, this, is, this is Pleasure P was saying Ooh. I was raised by a mom Ooh. and there was no masculine influence, bro. I was feminine as hell. It took me a while to grow up and realize. Yeah. So what advice would we give to a younger Don in this simping culture? Uh, was, uh, like he was he was on it so let's kick you off with you bro so yeah as you said when we were younger i grew up i had four older sisters man come on so so <laughs> one of them ones we have to learn things the hard way so i would say to myself just make sure she's interested in you before you dive in with all your superman like antics like flowers theater and all that stuff man just make sure obviously you can go on a date and stuff like that but just Make sure that the feelings are reciprocated back before you dive in deep, man. And just because if she's not interested in you, there's a big wide world out there and there's going to be someone else for you. So don't be caught up on that one, that one girl, basically. And I'll just say, just, yeah, make sure she likes you first. Or can I ask a question sure. on, yeah, on what you're saying? How can you tell? That's probably a good way to put it. How can you tell she's into you? It's just kind of like the feelings back. So obviously just being just communication, just like, just put it out there. Basically, just like, you know what? I kind of like you. What, what do you think? I'll, I'll just blatantly come out with that, you know? I've just like, just blatantly think. Just, just the way she acts around you. Like, does she, is it you always texting her? Or does she text you first sometimes? Is it kind of shared? So that reciprocation with everything, really. If it's just, if you don't see that, then she probably doesn't like you. Yeah. But again, if you're not sure, then ask the question before you be Superman, well. basically. So that's my, that's what I would do. Don't be Superman until you have to, basically. <laughs> don't, be <laughs> don't be Super Saber Hole. Don't be Super Saber Hole. Okay, so, um, Mike. Uh, oh, was that? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be yeah. very quick. Um, and I'll put that to your address to the audience and to the panel for my tardiness. Um, effectively, what I would say is, first and foremost, establish some boundaries, um, you know, and learn, teach yourself to tell yourself when enough is enough. And likewise, you know, let the person that you're courting, let them know that, you know, that you can only operate within certain boundaries of, self-respect and reciprocity for one for two i think it's important to cultivate yourself as well to ensure that you are confident enough to realize that if your attempts to be with a chick don't succeed it's okay that's there's, there's a reason why there's two to one women out there in the world because if one ain't gonna have it the next man the next woman rather might do so just just keep it moving and don't just put your eggs in one basket that's that's what i was tell my younger self yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, um, oh, sorry, if, if you're not having fun, then it probably ain't right. That's what I always look at. If I'm if I'm questioning something or uh, questioning the action myself, then uh, that's usually a sign that you're not in the right space. I'm very big on um, psychologically what's the impact it's having. So, yeah, yeah, that's it's... it for me. If you're not having fun, kick out.
I think for me, I think it's important to, first of all, define what you want from your interaction. If you're, you know, getting into a situation thinking, I just want to chop. (laughs) (laughs) If I don't get that into an episode, it's not right. Um, (laughs) Or you're going into thinking, actually, I like this girl. I think it's important to know what you want, first of all. And then secondly, I think it's really important to listen to the low key signs of reciprocation reciprocation is as small as you waking up checking your phone and she's messaged you first yeah. this is as simple as you know when you go out you know she just says oh let me get the drinks you know she, even if you don't let her she mentions it and she goes with her card you know that, that some she gives you reciprocation she's gonna if you, <laughs> yeah like, even if she does the gesture like oh i'm just looking yes, for my you know the, the, oh, yeah. oh, i'll get it i'll get it yeah <laughs> are you really gonna let me find my card <laughs> oh, yeah, hold on, so, let me get it. Yeah, oh, oh rec- you got and got it again. No, 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 no. <laughs> as long as there's reciprocation, I think that's key. Um, and then, yeah, you just got to be honest with yourself. And I think on the, the side note, I think as men, you've got to be knowing your worth and building into your worth. You've got to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. And if you think, you know what, actually, I can do better in yourself, then, bro, you've got to step up and do better. And know your worth, because exactly as Mike was saying, there are going to be times as a man, you know, it happens to all of us, bro. There's situations you step in and you say, I've got to check the fuck out of this one because yeah. I am worth a whole lot more. And knowing your value will allow you to do that. So that's what yeah. I would say to a younger me. It's good points, man. Good one. Um, I think from for me, if I had the opportunity, you know, about that time traveling DeLorean and, and we could go back <laughs> to my younger self. Um, the first thing I would I would say a number of things. Number one, don't listen to Mike. <laughs> it would be my number one. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to that guy. He's gonna jack you up into and tell you to sin. No, I'd say um, <laughs> <laughs> the OG sin. Uh, uh, no, number number one, no friends, no female friends. There's no such thing. I've been struck no such thing. in, in no that to explain yeah. that there is no such thing. It is purely beneficial to them, you know, and it would only ever really cause, if you are with someone and you've got this female or female friends, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be an issue, going to be right? Yeah. So, no, you work with them, of course, you know, it's the world of work. Um, you know, you have females in, in, your, in your family, but outside of that, why? Once, once you hit puberty, it's different when you're pre-pubescent. It's yeah, 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 yeah. And it's fun. yeah, yeah, yeah. Once your voice yeah, breaks you know, and your nuts drop. Exactly. Once, <laughs> once, once, your, once your voice breaks and your balls drop, what are you doing? Right? So, no. Um, number two, I would tell myself, do not fantasize it. Now, yes. I know this is a harder thing, right? But in my experience, that's been the problem. And I don't, I'm not talking about, you know, OnlyFans feel fantasy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about before you even know this person, in your mind, you've painted pictures, scenarios, places you're going to go, things you're going to do, right? <laughs> Whether getting married, having kids. No. <laughs> Bad idea. Got the names of the kids in that as well. That's not because it was what I've always I've all, always gotten disappointed because I've created in my mind what I think yeah. she is or what I want her to be, and mm. then the person that's not that's not who they are, and then I overlook yeah. things because in my mind she's mm. that person that I want her to be, right? So yeah. I would say allow her to show you who she is, not through the words but through the actions, things that like we've touched sure. on before. You know, is she proactive? She texts in. She, you know, mm-hmm. sincere about. It. It's the little things. Little things yeah. begin to give you clues to how someone is. Um, you know, uh, so that that would be some some of my you know, and also just be be clear about what you're doing and what you want. Don't let things flow. Be upfront. Yeah. If you're interested in that, be clear that you're interested in it. Don't try and think you can go through the back door through friendship, which is which no. is yeah, the simple way. Work. Friend zone. Is an eternal pit. <laughs> you never get out of that pit. Yeah. Yeah. The more you fight, it is that pit gets. It is the bottomless, the bottomless pit. 
of relationships the friend zone. You ain't never getting out. That's all right. You're there. Just left first, the order log off. So one thing, actually, I remember we were talking about before we go, I want to ask RW this because I think he's our resident expert. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of mentioned it before for you on the spot. So we didn't get this episode out when we wanted to, but we thought it would be quite funny to enlist the top three simps of 2023. Yeah. If you were to yeah. end on that note, what top three simps and why? Yeah, why? They really can participate in this. I, can say. I know RW. I remember we had this conversation, and I remember the number one. Um, there's there's Adam. What's his name? Adam. Yeah. J- no jumper. Adam twenty two. No jumper podcast. Twenty two. Adam twenty two. Adam twenty two. Who yeah. who effectively has been prostituting his wife? Uh, is that, is that the one that any... let the, the the black dude? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thing? The big, yeah. the biggest, love, blackest, yeah. buckest I... guy you can you can imagine. If you yeah. if you were to if you were no, to wait, no, but he, he, you know he's done more since then. He's done more. He's done more. Yeah. yeah. But my point like is that you, you crossed five. the line, right? You yeah. crossed the line. So he four. has commercialized and prostituted his own wife. A uh, man that I, yeah. I, I I I do not take seriously. You know, he's he's given up his. Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, his no husband. No man can call himself a husband, a husband. husband. Do that. So mm. no do them that um, he, he's up there. Um, unfortunately, I you know with what happened. Obviously, Will Smith <laughs> for me. Um, <laughs> Will and I you know I Will is such a especially <laughs> growing up. You know, probably one of the most yeah. successful mass in terms of image masculine. Yeah, he um, was. He was outwardly masculine. He was. He was like right? um, completely, and totally, and utterly emasculated in front of the world um, by his time and time uh, again. Wife, as well, not just once. Going, but going on to her show and just talking about making an entanglement she had, basically having sex with uh, her son's friend. And then talking wow. about that, it's wild behavior. That is evil. That, in my behavior. opinion, that is evil to do yeah. that to yeah. a man. It's one to thing do to do it. National... It's another to do it, make money from it, broadcast it, and then give the impression that you're both okay with it. You can see that man's soul is mm. being torn to shreds. Torn I mean, to shreds, absolutely. If you can't see that, yeah. you're not human. You're not, so, yeah. Um, unfortunately, well. he, he takes up. Just for Pete, yeah, takes number right. two. But for me, the number one and still the heavyweight champion of, of the simp world, for me, is the former Prince Harry. Um, <laughs> the absolute <laughs> ultimate simp. Um, and you know what? It, 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 it hurts me. It burns me. Because I actually quite liked Harry. I thought he was the joker of the, of the, of the group. Yeah. You know, he was the one that was a bit of a rebel. He yeah. could go anywhere in the world and pick any woman he would want and he chose a woman that effectively meant he had to give up the throne give up the throne of course he's second in line i get that but what where are you in the line where am I in the line? We're not in the line. Exactly. He's second not in line. He's closer than anyone else. Right? We're not even in the discussion. He literally, all he had to do in life, okay, because William is the responsible one. Think about it. All he had to do, just keep it cool, go to a few events each year, clean 200 just million a year, easy, <laughs> and a palace. And security. That's it. <laughs> For life. <Yeah>. For life. <laughs> right? And he gave it up for a woman that wouldn't even give up her Instagram page for him. Gave up his birthright, basically. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me, would she give up her fame so for him? True. I didn't even think about that. That's mad. Yeah, That's the real power. Real talk, the power of, uh, you know, long, pretty legs and a nice pretty face nah <laughs> the ultimate she must, have that good, good, she must have that good good 
You, you know, good, good, good. <laughs> not, 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 not yeah. <laughs> nothing. There ain't, there ain't nothing. Nothing's that good. I don't care. Nothing's that good. <laughs> two, I think it's about 200 mil. I can't remember. I don't know the exact figure. Yeah. That, 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 and then yeah, also, calm allowance. Calm think allowance about it. For just not living. just not just the throne, but ultimately your family. Whether you like the rules or not, yeah. it doesn't matter. That's your family. That's, That's your, your family, brother. Yeah. yeah. Real talk. Your dad. Yeah, You're gonna give them up, for... and then and then he ends up living in Oprah Winfrey's house. God, <laughs> Alan Perry, yeah, yeah, and Oprah Winfrey, yeah, yeah. And Divo C as and well. Even, even, he, even he said it. Even he said it. Now, I quote: "He said, um, now I'm just Harry. You just <laughs> you become an accessory, right? Bad. Nothing but uh, next to her Louis Vuitton." She could parade you around. <laughs> I, I struggle to see a man top Harry. I struggle. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's mad. <laughs> I know we've still got a bit of the year to 2024. I'm struggling. I'll be <laughs> flabbergasted if there's a man that can come along. New batch. I can the new simp batch. To That's that a good level. point. New batch of simps. Yeah. Yo, that was a heavy ending. Never heavy say ending. never. Like, never say never. Disappoint RW. You wouldn't disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> but, never well, say so never. Guys... I would be flabbergasted. <laughs> There's a word. There's a word for you. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. Well, our dubs just got us all on that MFI hit list. Thank you very much. They're coming for us now, boy. <laughs> We're excessive. Oh, boy, I He's coming on it. He's not even on it anymore. It's, it would be different if it was with him. He, he's not on it. He's because he's no longer. Yeah, we're, cool. we're, cool. Yeah. we're cool. Even man. that. He could just walk in the road now and people are like, oh, what's up? Bro? <laughs> cool. It's a shame. Anyway, that I guess that brings us to the end of the show. Yeah, brings yeah. us to the natural conclusion. So as always, thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. You know, this has been this short back and side show, the trim. Episode, that's that right? Is it trim? Shape, shape up. up. I keep doing shape that up. now, bro. The shape up is the shape, the shape up. I knew it was wrong. <laughs> this is the words that my mouth about. That's wrong. Uh, guys, follow us all over the socials. You know where we are SBAS underscore show. And then we're in your ears across all the audio platforms Spotify. Help me out, guys. You know, this is where I dimension Apple in. Podcast. Yeah. yeah. Title. Facebook. We there. We there. And we were dropping our episodes now twice weekly. So uh, we're going to be giving you the shape up midweek. You know, you need that shape up just to get you to the weekend. And on the weekend, we're going to drop our uh, studio episodes. Uh, some exciting stuff coming up. So show us that love. Share, like, subscribe. It's been a wave. Doc, I'm out. Oh, w. Trash. Peace. Peace. Again. <laughs> <laughs>